welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel. So I have recently purchased a new cordless drill, which I actually use more for um, setting bolts, 3mm bolts to be specific, which I use in almost all of my creations, uh, than I use for actual drilling. And I've encountered this problem. No matter which kind of a drill I tried, which brand, I tried almost all of them, I had the problem that even in the fast and weak low torque gear, even on the lowest setting, it would still provide so much torque that it would strip my tender 3mm bolts. Now my old cordless drill slash Akkuschrauber, as we call it in Germany, which is um, accumulator powered screwdriver, did not have this problem. So I was quite surprised to find out that at least in Germany nowadays, you apparently can either have something with a high voltage, which will go fast, but even in the lowest setting, for some reason, provides so much torque that it will strip the bolts. I've searched for solutions and couldn't find any, um, so I've decided to just uh, open it up. Voiding the warranty, of course, what else? Um, you might ask, why not take something with lower voltage? Well because I really like how fast this goes and due to high voltage it can do that and it's not the problem of the torque itself so the title of the video might be a bit misleading it's not about reducing the torque as such it's about adjusting the ratchet inside of this the thing that, that does this whenever you're applying too much torque for you know the chosen torque setting so basically making the one the lowest setting behave like an actually low setting instead of just torque murdering all of my, my bolts. So I found that across the most, if, if not all, of the uh, cordless drills slash electric screwdrivers, the system works pretty much the same. So I did it to mine, now it's, it purrs like a kitty. On the lowest setting it's really really tender and doesn't strip my bolts, in fact I'm using the next one after that. This provides just the right amount of torque, and if I set it all the way to maximum, it will still provide sufficient torque for the heavy-duty works. But since I'm again using it mostly for uh, costuming and props with those 3mm uh, bolts, um, I'm more interested in it uh, being in the one setting that will give me enough torque, but not too much, and with, will not just destroy all my bolts. So. The thing I'm about to show you is guaranteed to void your warranty, so be warned about that. It's also probably not specifically safe for the tool, you might just break your tool or, I don't know, injure yourself doing this. So you have been warned, warned proceed at your own discretion, uh, as this might cause some damages. And you are responsible for those yourself. So first thing you do is open up the chuck all the way, don't focus on my face, focus on the chuck, camera. So you open the chuck all the way, and then you will see, I'm pretty sure I can't show it to you on camera, but in there, there is a uh, bolt. And that bolt is threaded in the opposite direction. So to open that bolt, you need to first Rotate it to the right, while also holding everything else in place. Now, if you have problem with that, then what you need to do is to spray something that will uh, act as an oil, any of the many compounds, and then uh, give it a, you know, put your screwdriver in and give it a couple of short wax with a hammer to get that uh, bolt inside moving so you can liberate your chuck. I think this is enough. There it is, so don't lose the bolt. Now that our chuck doesn't have this uh, securing bolt anymore, what we're gonna do is take the thickest Allen wrench that we have And we're now going to close the chuck a little bit. And then we tighten in the Allen wrench into the chuck 
as tightly as possible. So here is the Allen wrench in the chuck. Now we will set the machine to the maximum resistance setting so the ratchet doesn't kick on and we will set it into neutral. I don't know why I've seen it in another video of a guy doing it in German uh, and that works. Uh, anyway then what you do is take a hammer better with the flat side like this and you strike it quickly and decisively. No pushing with the hammer, no you know pussyfooting around it, you just strike it and that should give it enough of a kick, enough momentum to loosen the chuck. So here is the thingamajig, the axle or whatever it's called. I tend to forget words. Anyway, um, of course you preserve your chuck, just put it aside by now. Now, it will vary from uh, model to model, from brand to brand, how to proceed here exactly. Now here you have two little screws, which is rather convenient on the other one that I'm actually using, this being my old one that I don't use anymore. Uh, on the other one it was a different kind of fastener, so you just have to get around uh, of how this part, this dial, is connected to the rest of the clutch assembly. Once you get past that step, things will also start getting more standard again. And it all works in the, using the same principle. There is a clutch spring in there. I'll show it all to you in a sec. Uh, keep in mind to keep all the parts together. As you open it, remember or even make a photo of how everything is arranged and open it carefully. Actually, if you don't know the hell you're opening, you also should be wearing protective glasses. I'm not doing it right now, but I did the first time I did this because, you know, there is a spring inside that. What if it pops out into my eye? I didn't know that whether or not it would do that back then. So I'm removing this dial right here and you will see this construction. So here is our spring and the dial, as you rotate the dial, the dial will move up and down just slightly and it will press down on this clutch spring. And the clutch spring presses on this small metallic ring right here, which we'll now remove. And you see that inside of that are ball bearings. So the motor is connected down there. And basically to cut a long story short, the harder the spring pushes on top of those ball bearings, the more torque it will require for the whole thing to start ratcheting, to start doing this, giving up basically. So if your goal, like my goal was, to reduce the amount of torque required to trigger this mechanism that it stops providing the torque to the bolt, then what you need to do is either get another spring which um, is just softer or what I did, I've just cut off a good chunk of the spring. So here is the spring. Focus here camera. And you will notice that the bottom part is kind of not really changing dimensionally much on the axis that is interesting to us. So what I did for my spring is cut it somewhere around here. Uh, obviously you will need to experiment and I suggest cutting it off one piece at a time because otherwise you might just cut off too much of it. But basically, if you understand the principle of this spring being pressed down by this dial onto this metallic ring being the thing that's responsible for how soon your device starts to ratchet, then you will know what to do. And of course some improvisation is required here. It took me two or three attempts to get it right. And also one thing that happened on my adjusted uh, Akkuschrauber cordless drill now is that uh, the numbers do not exactly correspond to the torque levels anymore, which doesn't bother me that much. Because, you know, I, I just, I, I don't need that exact number to be that exact number. I just know the, the lowest setting is what I'm using or the one after the lowest. So that's all I really need. You can of course uh, take additional time 
to make sure that you assemble it back together the exact way that you disassembled it and all that so that all the numbers match and everything is just dandy but what I wanted to have was basically just that one setting that is a lower torque so you just put the whole thing back together I will not do this now in front of the camera it's pretty self-explanatory you put it back together the way it was with the lighter spring adjusted spring you put the chuck back on on your way back when putting the chuck back remember you do not actually need to strike it as you reattach it so just tighten it up real quick and fast to the max there we go then you loosen the chuck drop back in the bolt and once you do that, remember, this is a bolt uh, that goes in the other direction than usually. So to tighten it, you actually go left. And that's pretty much it. Remember, this will void your warranty, but it might just save your day, especially if you're like me and uh, just can't find a modern tool which will go fast, but at the same time, start ratcheting earlier so yeah i know this is kind of a very specific tool hack for probably a very specific group of people but um if you are like me looking for a solution to this specific problem then i hope this video helped you uh, check out the rest of the channel and if you're a regular viewer then also support me on patreon and i will see you in the next episode until then hail the snail